Welcome to the Church of the Good Shepherd in Raleigh, North Carolina. My name is Brooks Grabner, and I'm serving as priest in charge while the rector, Imogen Rodenheiser, is away on parental leave. We gather for worship on this, the second Sunday of the Christmas season, in anticipation of the Feast of the Epiphany, which falls later this week and marks the end of the 12 days of Christmas. And so we will mark this day with the story and songs associated with that great feast, the story of the Magi who come to pay homage to the Christ child by following a star from the east. May the light of Christ illumine your lives with joy and peace this day. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish, there shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. A reading from Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. 
Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things, so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising 
and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to say yes to being moved and led by you. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Today, on this second Sunday of Christmas, we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Epiphany Day is always on January 6th, the 12th day after Christmas. And this year, it falls on this coming Wednesday. And because it, it falls on a weekday, the church gives us the option of celebrating the Epiphany on this Sunday. Now, the word Epiphany is derived from the Greek, from the Greek word Epiphania meaning manifestation or appearance or revelation. And so what is being manifested? What is appearing? What is being revealed? Why is this feast day such a big deal? We get a clue within our worship service. For we always sing, we three kings of Orient are, bearing gifts we travel afar. Our gospel lesson tells the story of non-Jewish wise men from far, far off lands who come to bring gifts and worship the child born king of the Jews. Notice the dichotomy here non-Jewish, that is Gentile, wise men, typically depicted as being of various ethnicities, 
who have come to worship a Jewish baby. And it has been revealed to them across time and space that this Jewish baby, born many miles away from their own homelands, is someone they must make haste to go and not just worship and bring gifts, but acknowledge as the manifestation of a God to whom they probably had not previously worshiped or acknowledged as their God. It's a mystery. We hear in our epistle lesson that word mystery four times. So let's explore a little more. For there is something magnetic compelling, illuminating. There's this, this force, this mysterious force, perhaps to them, that is leading and, gu and guiding them to acknowledge a God incarnate manifested in a human baby. A God to show the way to unify all of God's created humanity, Jewish and non-Jewish, into something that will be later called the body of Christ, the church. Now, there are other clues as to what is being manifested or revealed in every single one of our scripture lessons today. In Isaiah, we hear of nations coming to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. They all gather together. They all come to you. In our psalm, we hear that kings bow down. And in Ephesians, we hear the spirit revealed the mystery that Gentiles have become joint heirs with their Jewish sisters and brothers in the body of Christ. And that mystery of unity, the mystery of unity, was made known to Paul through God's grace of revelation. You know, Paul was in a Roman jail around the time this letter was written, awaiting trial before Nero. What landed him in jail was his preaching, his uncompromising acknowledgement and commitment to the commission he received from God to speak and challenge the prevailing theological and political norms of his day, norms that divided rather than unified, norms that challenged leadership that allied itself with groups that used power in a way that benefited their own self-interest without regard to the devastating effects their decisions had on the many. Norms that in fact marginalized so many and benefited so few. The commission that Paul was given is in fact the commission to us all who have committed by virtue of our baptisms and vowed to be Jesus followers. It is a commitment that connotes movement and transition from where we are in our political and economic and social justice beliefs to where Jesus is leading us in establishing a world characterized by this mystery 
of unity that is so prevalently present in our readings today. There is no mistake that God, that that is God's commission to us. Those magi, those magi did not just bring gifts to the baby Jesus. Their real gift is to all of us across time and space. The gift of remembering that we have brothers and sisters in Christ who don't look like us, who don't speak the same language as us, who don't have the same customs as us, who live in countries that oppress and silence voices through the use of dictatorial or military might, who don't enjoy full bellies, and a nice, comfortable place to lay their heads every night, whose children suffer from educational and cultural disparities, who aren't afforded the privilege of equity in our systems of legislative action, jurisprudence, banking, finance, medical accessibility. The gift of the Magi across time and space is a call for us to answer the question, is the church, the larger church, and this church of the Good Shepherd, is the church today a practitioner of finding common ground, of repairing breaches, and using all of the resources available to us of being a transformative force in changing our world such that it is characterized by a transformative movement towards unity of all of God's people and creation. Epiphany provides the church an opportunity to examine its own practices, behaviors, and attitudes. It calls us to imagine a future beyond our present reality, a future that we help, because that's our call that we help create with God's help, that moves us towards God's dream for God's people. And I'd like to leave you with one of my favorite Christmas poems by the great Christian mystic Howard Thurman. You may hear me quote it many times. And it goes, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. The work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. Amen. Let us join in affirming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, maker, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of all that, that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only, only Son of God, God eternally, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 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 God light from light, 
true, true God, God from true God, God begotten not made of one, of one being with, with the Father, Father. through him, him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came, he came down from heaven. By the, By the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit he, became he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was, was made man. For our, for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried. On the, On the third day, he rose again in accordance, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into heaven and is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his, and his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church that, that we, we all, all may be one. one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that, that your, your name, name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that, that there, there may, may be justice and peace on, on the earth. earth. Grant us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that, that they, they may, may be delivered, delivered from, from their distress. We pray for those who have died, especially those we name now, either silently or aloud. Anne Strickler Zucker, mother of Rob Zucker. Bruce Barnes. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We commend to your loving care those who have asked for our prayers, especially Paul Hoke, Chris Yetter, Monty Holder, Jill Bryan, Ann Sanders, Hal Miller, Wilma Miller, Ed Barnes, Carolyn Beard, Eileen Wood, Carol, Pete Taylor, Suzanne Newton, Roy Wright, Janet Gillum, Vive Kershaw, Carolyn Owens, Bob Yates, Gina, Sophie Allen, David LaPasha, Ellen Wood, Ryan Smith, Marie Williams, Nick Smith, John Murphy, Mike Elliott, Margaret Hatcher, Allison Ziegelmeyer, Mike Webb, Miles Habel, Becky Lopez, Cora, Bill, Lynn, Debbie, Becky, Patty, Nolan, Daryl, Carson, Charlie, Elise, Laura and Edith Boucher, Meredith Vance, Harry Johnson Sr., Robbie Brake, Kelly McLeod Aldridge, Ray Dale Gee, Allison Tysinger Bratt, Corey Bratt, Carlene Fuller, Reggie Fuller, Jason and Dawn Downs, Odie Kemp, Kirk, and Susan. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
let us lift up our hearts in praise and thanks to God, creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and, power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In union, O Christ, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Light eternal, by your grace, keep us ever faithful to your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. 